we looked at Moses part one, and we talked about some things uh, that can help us grow by looking at the followers of Moses, by looking at the children of Israel as they wandered through uh, the Sinai Peninsula for 40 years. Now, that seems terrible. <laughs> I bet they wish they had a car. And uh, I tell you, we can learn a lot from other people's behaviors, can't we? And so, but I, I can't stop there. I mean, Moses dominates the first five books of the Bible. And so we have to look at some of the things that Moses learned about himself, maybe, and, and some of the things that God had instructed him. One of the things, one of the things dealt with his anger. Anger has destroyed so many relationships over the years. Anger is, is constantly destroying people's relationships. You know, you can say a lot of things in anger, but you can't take them back, can you? How many of you have said something in anger and have wished you could just recall those words? I tell you, people have lost their jobs over being angry. People have lost their employees over being angry. How many of you have quit a job because your boss was just verbally and, and physically abused, just an angry person? People have lost their children over being angry. A lot of kids don't listen to their parents because their parents are just a jerk. You know, we expect our kids to do exactly what we say. Oh, okay. It's true. But the Bible also says, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. You know, we have lost our children because of our tempers. People have lost their spouse over their temper. You can say a lot of things to your spouse. You can't get them back, though. People have lost their friends. Maybe you've lost a friendship because you lost your cool. You lost your temper. You, you became angry, and now they're no longer your friends. People have lost deals in business. They have lost honor. They have lost their Christian testimony over anger. When you get to Ephesians 4, you see a wonderful little passage in here. It's a wonderful little verse, and... Uh, read you probably four verses here real quickly. I just want to mention it briefly. Ephesians 4, 26, Be ye angry and sin not. You say, is that even possible to be angry and sin not? For the most part, it's not possible. The reality is, is there, are, there, is, there is a time and a place to be angry. But it is so few and far between. Most people live with a hothead. They, they are, they, they, this is what we call unrighteous indignation. There is righteous indignation where you can be angry for the sake of God, but there is a time and a place, and it's so very few and far between, but people live in this state of anger. It says, be angry and sin not, let not the sun go down upon your wrath. How many times have you gone to bed angry? If you've been married for any, any length of time, you maybe have a, have a little, uh, uh, you know, I don't know what you want to call it, a little, a little fight with your wife or, or, uh, or your, your husband. I mean, mostly, I mean, the husband's always right, but, um, you know, you get this little anger thing going on, and then, you got, then you go to bed. And, uh, you know, you turn your backs to each other in bed, and you don't even look at each other because you're just so angry with me. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Verse 27, neither give place to the devil. This is exactly what happens. You are giving place to the devil when you are angry and you sin and you let the sun go down upon your wrath, if you don't get it right before you go to bed, let me tell you what, you're giving place to the devil to get, let him, allow him to kind of weasel his way in there, right? He wants to destroy your marriage. Can I tell you that? The devil wants to destroy your marriage. The devil wants to destroy your relationship with your children. He wants to destroy your job. He wants to destroy your friends. He wants to destroy your relationship with your friends. The devil has nothing good about him. It's giving place to the devil. Verse 28, let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing 
which is good that he may have to give to him that needeth. So guess what, friends? Work hard that you can help others. Work hard with your own hands that you can have something to give to others. That's what that verse says. In verse 29, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. But when you're angry, you say all manner of things, you know. You can't get that back. This isn't a confidential document. You can just redact it, you know. <laughs> oh, this is a transcript of what I said. Well, I'm going to take that back and that back and that back and that back. Can't take it back. Let no corrupt communication come up, proceed out of your mouth. Don't say things that are bad. And people, when they have an anger problem, when they have a temper, they say all manner of things that they're quite honestly disgraced by. Well, this morning, we're going to look at Moses and the effect of his anger. We're going to look at it real quickly, so you're going to have to, have to hold yourself down to your seat because we've got to get to communion. There was a cause and effect. There was an effect of Moses' anger. So first of all, let's look at Moses lost his temper. Moses lost his temper. And there's almost no good reason to get angry. I don't know how many times in our lives we've said, well, I needed to be angry, and there was good that came of it. Most people, when they're angry, they, nothing good comes of it, and then they are regretting it forever. Because they've lost a spouse or lost a friend or lost their children or lost a job or lost a deal or, or lost their testimony before God. We have to be very, very, very careful. It almost never produces anything good. Matter of fact, James 1 verse 20 says, For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Your wrath doesn't do anything to promote, to encourage, to to bring about God's righteousness. And you can, you can be as wrathful as you want, and you're going to regret it. It doesn't bring about glory for our Heavenly Father. And some people are known for their tempers. Do you know people who are known for their tempers? Anybody know anybody who's just known for their temper? You know, when you, when, when you, um, when you try to describe an individual... By the way, can I say this? Men and, and women describe individuals differently. I was in, did the criminal justice thing for a long time, and, and uh, if you try to get, if you have an eyewitness testimony of a female and the eyewitness testimony of a male, you have remarkably different traits that they, that they uh, communicate. You, know, you ask a lady and you say, you say uh, what did he look like? <laughs> and she'll describe him one way. And you ask a guy, what did he look like? And he'll a whole different set of traits, right? You don't want to be the person who says, uh, who, who has on their epitaph, you know, uh, he was an angry man. <laughs> you don't want that. Some people, uh, they, they describe their, their, uh, their friends that way or their boss that way or their, their, their wife or their husband that way. Oh, they're, they're just such an angry person. All this. You don't want that. You don't want to be described as the person who is always angry at everything or anger at all. You, you want the descriptors like this. He was a calm person. He dealt with things tenderly. He was firm, but he was patient. You don't want to be this person who's, who's angry. And Moses had an anger problem. I mean, this started when he tried to deliver the children of Israel. I mean, we talked about this two weeks ago. He sees this, uh, this Egyptian beating up his, his Hebrew brother, and, uh, and he goes and he kills the Egyptian, buries him in the sand. I mean, that's just, I mean, that doesn't say, that doesn't say cool, calm, and collect, right? <laughs> that's a, that says, I'm going to get mine. I'm gonna, going gonna to take care of this guy. And then he, uh, I mean, throughout, throughout this whole thing, you can see throughout this wandering, he's, 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 he's in, the, in the mountain with God, and, and uh and God, uh, he, he writes with his own finger this, the Ten Commandments, and he comes down, Moses comes down with this tablet, and, and uh, he sees the people, uh, you know, all uh, engrossed in idolatry, and, and he throws down 
the tabernacle, or not the tabernacle, this, this tablet and busts it, and then God has to do it again, make it again. I mean, he's just angry, an angry individual. So when we get to Numbers 20, this is just following suit with who he was. Numbers chapter 20, turn there if you would, beginning in verse 1. We'll see here that Moses lost his temper, beginning in verse 1. Then came the children of Israel, even the whole congregation, into the desert of sin. In the first month, and the people abode in Kadesh, and Miriam died there and was buried there. Verse 2. And there was no water for the congregation, and they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron. This isn't the first time this has happened, where the people complained over and over and over again. I, have you ever worked so hard you will drink almost anything? <laughs> Were you just dying for water? I, I guess you can live 30 days or something without food, three days without water. You need water. Your body's made 80% water. You gotta drink, right? So here this congregation is. They gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron. And the people chode with Moses and spake, saying, Would God that we had died? When our brethren died before the Lord? And why have ye brought up the congregation of the Lord into the wilderness that we and our cattle should die there? And wherefore have ye made us to come up out of Egypt to bring us unto this evil place? It is no place of seed or of figs, or of vines, or of pomegranates. Neither is there any water to drink. And Moses and Aaron went from the presence of the assembly unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and they fell upon their faces. And the glory of the Lord appeared unto them. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take the rod, and gather thou the assembly together, thou and Aaron and thy brother, and speak ye, Unto the rock before their eyes, and it shall give forth the water, and thou shalt bring forth that or bring forth to them water out of the rock, so thou shalt give the congregation and their beasts drink. And Moses took the rod from before the Lord, as he commanded him, and Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock, and he said unto them, Hear now, ye rebels, must we fetch you water out of this rock? And Moses lifted up his hand, and with his rod, he smote the rock twice, and the water came out abundantly, and the congregation drank, and their beasts also. Now, is that what God had told Moses to do? It wasn't. You see, Moses is challenged with a real challenging group of people, and he was frustrated. He had it up to here. I am so sick and tired of these people. You gave me these people, I'm supposed to lead them, and they do nothing but complain, complain, complain. And you can see Moses' frustration just building. They weren't happy in Egypt. They weren't happy in the wilderness. Let me ask you something. Do you think they're really going to be happy in in Canaan? Do you think they're really going to be excited about this this new promised land that flows with milk and honey? I wonder how many of us today do the same thing. I wonder how many of us do that with marriage. <laughs> I just wish I was married. I just wish I was married and, and, uh, and, 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 had, a, and had a spouse. And then you get a spouse. <laughs> I just wish I was single. I can do so much more when I'm single. Don't have all of this baggage. You know, I can do whatever I want to do. I don't have to think about my wife. I could just do whatever. So then they get a divorce. And then they're divorced. They say, if I could just be married, <laughs> I, could, I, could, I could do so many things if I was married. How about that? We do that just with the weather. We do it. I joke about it all the time. I wish it was, so, I wish it was warmer. <laughs> and then I wish it was cooler. I wish we'd get some rain. Then we get some rain. It was like, I wish it was drier. And then it's so dry. It's like, I wish it was, would rain, you know? We just can't ever really be happy, can we? We do it with our occupation. 
If I just had a different job, then you get to a different job. And then you say, well, if I had a different position within the job, and then if you say, if I just had more money, if I just had more responsibility, or then if I just had less responsibility. For some reason, people just can't ever find that, that zone where they can just be satisfied. And this is what Moses was dealing with. I brought you out of bondage. You're free. Oh, but it's, it's just not what I was hoping it would be. You know how hard it is for a leader to deal with complaining people? I, 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 I try to put myself in the president's shoes. Big shoes to fill. I mean, literally, I think it's a size 12. But I'm just saying. Put me in his position. This is what the people want. So he gives it to him. And he wins. He wins all the time. And then this happens. And then this happens. And then, this, and then you just can't ever, you just can't ever, like, actually get a consensus. All of the people just complaining. Now, verse 7 and 8 really make me laugh. I, 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 every time I read this, verse 7 and 8, I, I laugh. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, verse 8, Take the rod and gather thou the assembly together. So get your rod. Get the assembly together. Uh, thou and Aaron and thy brother. So want everybody together. And I want you to speak unto the rock before their eyes. Like, that is so funny to me. <laughs> I Bring forth water. Come on. Come on, little water. I mean, can you imagine what has been running through his mind? I mean, I just, in my mind, I just can't even fathom. He's got this rod, and he's thinking to himself, you want me to what? You want me to speak? Forty years ago in Horeb, I hit this thing, and water came out. You want me to do what? And he says, no, I want you to speak to it. But see, Moses is Moses, and he can't contain himself. So I think I, I could see him like kind of just jumping up on this rock and whapping a couple times just for good measure. And I mean, he's shouting at these people, you rebels, what's wrong with you guys? Now, this is about 40 years from the first incident at Horeb to now. I mean, he, first he had faith, Right. He had faith, and he did exactly what it was God wanted him to do, and now he's just frustrated. He literally went from faith to frustration, and we see that when we end up in Numbers 20, verse 12. This is the real reason why Moses did not enter the promised land. Ready for this in verse 12? And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, because ye believed me not. That was the reason. Because you believe me not. To sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel, therefore ye shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given to them. You see, he was so angry. But why was he angry? He was angry because he didn't trust God. Moses lost his temper because he lost his trust. And when I look at people who have a Short fuse. They have, they have also very little trust. Because they can't stand back and say, whatever, God, you are in control. Lord, you're in control, and I'm just going to follow you and do exactly what you want me to do. You want me to speak to this thing? Rock, bring forth water. I'm going to trust that God is giving me the right instruction at the right time for this right people. And as opposed to being frustrated with the people, you have to have faith in God and say, I'll speak to the rock. I'll hit the rock. I don't know why you told me to get my rod if I'm not going to hit this thing, but I'm going to do it. I'm just going just to speak to this thing, and water is going to flow out, and I'm going to trust in you, Lord. When, when, when you begin to analyze why you get angry, a lot of it has to deal with just the lack of faith you have in God. You see, Moses' behavior had everything to do with his belief. Your behavior always has everything to do with your belief. You tell me what a man thinks, and I'll tell you where he's going to go. I want to know what a person believes. If you want to grow, this is our growth series. We can't ever forget that. If you want to grow this year, you have to have a much longer fuse. 
You have to be able to be the person that says, man, that guy, he's just so calm all the time. He's as cool as a cucumber. <laughs> I guess a, a cucumber's cool. but He actually has an alliteration, cool cucumber. But he is just so calm. You're, you're not going to help anything by being angry. It never helps anything. Leaders that are calm oftentimes cool their people, and when you read Proverbs 15.1, you see that a soft answer turneth away wrath. But grievous words, that's what stirs up strife. I was in a situation this last week. Someone had asked me to help them with a construction project, and I was with a, a general contractor. I was with the electrician, and I was with a homeowner. And... Uh, the general contractor, he's just frustrated. Nothing's happening his way. And so he's yelling at the homeowner. And the electrician is cussing a blue streak. I mean, just he's just every, every word. Every, well, not every word. It almost was every word. Yeah, I guess it was almost every word. And they're all angry. And I said, hey, man, can I look at the plan real quick? Yeah, yeah, fine. I said, oh, cool. So this is the wall here. So this is the new addition. That looks good. What about this over here? And everybody began to calm down. And then they would talk amongst themselves, and everybody elevated because the contractor was right, and the homeowner was right, and the electrician was right. And I'm sitting there, and I'm standing back, and I said, hey, can I, can I look at it one more time? Just, just take it over here. And I, just, I said, okay, so there's going to be a wall here, blah, blah, blah. You're going to have a light over here. You're going to remove this header, right? And you're just going to extend that down. And he's like, yeah, that's exactly what we're doing. All right. You know, I called them. That was on Wednesday. I called them on Friday morning. I said, I just can't do business with your boss. I called the salesman. I said, I can't do business with him. And he says, she says, I'm so sorry you had to deal with that. You know what? A soft answer turneth away wrath. But grievous words, that stirs up strife. You know, Moses lost his temper. And because he lost his temper, point two, he lost his treasure, didn't he? He lost his temper, and then he lost his treasure. Canaan was the ultimate treasure for Moses. I mean, he had lived his life for this. His, his, his whole being was to take the people to the promised land, this wonderful, wonderful oasis. And because he couldn't control his own emotions, he didn't really get what he wanted. It's, it's, a, it, it's amazing to me that people think that if I just throw a fit, I'll get what I want. I just got to be angry and I'll get exactly what I want. You know, we see this with children. And, and actually, we learn from the children this. The kids, they're over here, and they, they, they throw a temper tantrum. They get angry. I want my something, whatever it is. You put whatever down. My graham cracker. And, uh, and fine, fine, I'll give you your graham cracker. Will you just stop it? Well, they threw, they, they threw temper, and they got exactly what they wanted. But they really didn't get what they wanted in the long run. They think that they're controlling. So we learn from them. And we do the same thing as adults, don't we? We we just, oh, well, I want it my way. And this is what Moses did. But he really didn't get what he really wanted, which the true treasure was Canaan. You actually lose much greater than you gain with anger. Let me point out a couple things and ask you a couple questions. Do you think that you'll have good friends if you're an angry person? Do you think people are going to want to hang around an angry person? Matter of fact, the Bible says, Proverbs 22, make no friendship with an angry man. Make no friendship with an angry man and with a furious man, thou shalt not go. Don't go around. Don't go with, an, with a furious person. Don't make friendship. You know what? I don't want to be friends. I won't be friends with an angry person. The Bible says not to, and I'm just following the Bible. So if, if, if a person is hot-headed, they have a temper, you, you, can, you can take that somewhere else. doesn't mean I won't be friendly to them. It doesn't mean I won't love them. I'm not going to be friends with a person who's angry all the time. Forget it. Just, just like a negative person. How many of y'all want to hang around negative people? Yeah. Just can't wait to be around someone who's just going to tear people, kick people in the head, you know. Just, yeah. No, nobody wants that. I don't want to be around, I don't want to be around a person who's an angry person. You have a real short list of friends if you have a short fuse. Nobody's going to hang around. You're going to wonder. You're going to be like, why doesn't anybody hang around me? I'm not even sure that angry people like to hang around angry people, although maybe I could be wrong. Maybe it validates their anger, you know? 
you get a bunch of angry people together and it's like, yeah, see, I'm not such a bad person, you know? And then you get somebody who's just cool as a cucumber and they're like, hey, man, God is good. They're like, well, what makes you think you're better than us? And it's like, I didn't say that. You said that, you know? <laughs> Proverbs 18, 24 says, a man that hath friends must show himself friendly. And a friend's got to be friendly. And, and there's just something opposite being friendly and being angry, right? Do you think that you're going to have a chill life? People, I just want a real chill life. I just don't want any problems. I just don't want any problems. But if you're an angry person, that's not true. Proverbs 15, 18, a wrathful man stirreth up strife. You're going to have a chill life. You're going to have a problem. It says, but he that is slow to anger appeaseth strife. You'll actually lose a whole lot more than you think you'll gain. You might get your way. You might get your graham cracker. You might stomp your feet and be able to do the one thing maybe that you wanted because you threw a temper tantrum. But the reality is, is you're going to lose your greatest prize of all. Whatever that prize is for you, good testimony, relationship with your spouse, a relationship with, with God. I tell you what, you're going you're gonna to be burned and burdened with a temper. So Moses lost his temper. He lost his treasure. And in conclusion, let me just give you two quick points here. First of all, don't be angry internally or externally. There's people who say, well, I bottle it up on the inside. Well, that's, that's a problem. That's a problem. People bottle it up on the inside, usually let it go eventually. And if you're in the way of that, you're not going to be friends with that person much longer. Don't bottle it up on the inside. Don't, don't, even, don't even let it affect you. Ask yourself, is this really going to help anything? I mean, am I going to win because I just get angry? Proverbs 19 says that the discretion of a man deferreth his anger. If you want to be wise, you want discretion to defer your anger. Put it off. You don't need to be angry. It doesn't help you. It doesn't help them. It doesn't help you. And let me tell you what. People who know that you're angry, will stay, you, will stay, you will stay away from them. They will stay away from you. It's going to be an ugly mess. But if you're just cool as a cucumber and you just love life and you just are a positive, uplifting, encouraging, challenging person that just thinks the best of people. Let me tell you what, people are going to come around you and they're going to be like, I don't know what it is about this guy. You know, it just, I, he's just not an angry guy. You know? He just loves life. He loves life. So first of all, don't be angry internally or externally. And second, don't be so foolish to think that somebody else made you angry. That is the most ridiculous, ridiculous statement. Well, if they wouldn't have made me mad, they didn't make you mad. You're a mad person. You have a, you have a problem internally. You are a mad person. You're an angry person. Ecclesiastes 7, 9 says, Be not hasty in spirit to be angry, for anger resteth in the bosom of fools. That's where it's at. It's inside of you. They just drew out what was inside. They didn't make you angry. You're an angry person. They just revealed it. So many people say, well, if the situation would have been so different, if, if, such an, if, so, if they wouldn't have cut me off, or if I wouldn't have had to pay taxes on that, well, the IRS didn't make you mad. You're just a mad person. Well, my spouse, well, if they wouldn't have said this or done that, well, I can't believe you did that, Dana. Who wouldn't have made me mad? She didn't make me mad. She just drew out what was already there. Don't be so foolish to think that someone else made you angry. I wish we weren't such an angry call. And I tell you what, when you look around and you see what's happening in some of these cities, Portland, the government didn't make them mad. They're angry people. They're angry people, and they think that their wrath is going to solve problems. It's not going to solve any problems. It's going to create them. 
And that's, what it's been, that's what's been happening. When you look around and you see the riots, they're not solving problems. They're causing them. They're causing hatred. They're causing schism. They're causing people to hate people, right? It's an ugly mess out there. Their anger is, doesn't help anybody. But the government didn't do it. Their spouse didn't do it. The police didn't do it. This is just what they want to do to let it shine. And that's what they're doing. I wish people would be more, be more chill in life, you know? Moses really lost something wonderful. Can you imagine all of that time? All of the time before, all of the time during, seeing God work these wonderful miracles in the wilderness and still getting up to the promised land but not getting in. I don't know how many of you guys have, have uh, been at like a Six Flags or something like that. How many, guys have, how many of you have, have, have wanted to do something, like a, a, a theme park or something like that, or uh, maybe you go to the movie theater or something, I don't know, whatever it is you guys do. But, you, but you're standing in line and you're waiting and you're looking at the clock, and you know they close at 9, and you start to do the math. And you're like, there are nine people... I don't know if they're, they're going to close before I get there. You know, or you're, in the, you're, you're, you're at the bank and you're in the drive through and, and then you pull up and the shade goes down. And you're like, come on! I was in line here for like 10 minutes! You, know? <laughs> you just get so burned. You know? I mean, can you imagine Moses? I mean, that would really set him off. You know? <laughs> what are you talking about, Lord? I did all of this stuff for you. <laughs> just an angry person. Don't be an angry person. You pull up to the drive through the shade clothes, you say, ah, I should have been here a couple minutes earlier, you know. You get up to the you get up to Chick-fil-A and, and you're just about ready to place your order, and they say, Sorry, sir, we took the last order. You're like, hey, that's fine. You took my last order too, because I didn't come back. <laughs> I'm not gonna lose my cool though. Right? You gotta trust God. God didn't want you to have that chicken sandwich. God didn't want you to go to the bank. I think when we when we're just calm, just calm you'll end up with exactly what it is that you really do want, this wonderful treasure, this wonderful promised land. Moses lost his temper, and then he lost his treasure. Don't do that. If you want to grow this year, don't lose your temper. Don't lose your temper. You'll gain your treasure, okay? The problem with growth oftentimes, well, it is 100% us all the time. It's with us. So let's grow.